Hello, Dr. Raj Singh here from Las Vegas. I'm an internal medicine physician specialized in nephrology, anti-aging, wellness, and hormones. A patient recently asked my opinion on alkaline water to improve his health. So I thought I'll research it myself and look at the science and here are my findings in this video. So first of all, what is alkaline water and what's the big deal and why is it different than regular tap water? So alkaline water is alkaline because of addition of alkalizing compounds like you know silica, potassium, magnesium, bicarbonate, all those things will make the water more alkali. Now what's the rationale behind using alkaline water? The companies that make alkaline water, they promote it by saying that, you know, addition of alkaline water can help neutralize the acidic effects of the American diet, which will lead to better bones, better skin, and better in overall health. The theory goes is that American diet is high in processed foods and protein, and when we consume a high protein diet, the liver breaks it down, produces a huge amount of acid, and this acid is going to get removed by the kidneys, some of it might get buffered by the bone and in that process can lead to high rate of bone loss which can lead to osteoporosis, osteopenia. So this is sort of true that you know United States has a very high rate of osteoporosis and osteopenia despite having a high calcium and vitamin D diet. So there might be something here. Right? So let's start by looking at pH. So pH is short for potential of hydrogen or hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions they combine with chloride generate hydrochloric acid. So more hydrogen ion availability may lead to generation of more acid. Regular tap water has a pH of about 7. Alkaline water has a pH slightly above 7. Now bottled water is slightly acidic, right, and doesn't generally have most minerals. So that's why we will say drink, if you drink only water from RO system or bottled water, you're going to have poor health because your body is deprived of some very essential minerals that are found in tap water. World Health Organization issued a report in 2005 which explained the negative health effects of drinking water from RO systems and just by drinking bottled water all the time. Now the next is let's look at the understanding of how our body actually maintains acid-base balance. So our pH levels or acid-base levels they vary in different parts of the body. So a pH of 7 is sort of in the middle of the scale, is neutral. So blood is slightly basic uh, with a pH of around 7.35 to 7.45 and the kidneys they maintain the pH of blood close to 7.40. Now our stomach for obvious reason has a pH of 4 to 5 when it's, when it's empty and 1 or 2 after just after a meal. So stomach acid is very acidic. So after a meal is consumed, protein is absorbed in the gut, all of this is going to travel to the liver through portal vein. Liver is going to break this down into amino acids, other molecules that can be utilized by our body. Some of the byproducts of this process of protein breakdown is going to be hydrogen ions. Now, too many hydrogen ions, they will going to bind with calcium carbonate in our bone and the other stuff called glutamine, which is the end product as well, is going to be removed by the kidneys by combining it into ammonia and excreting in the urine as urea. Of course, the lungs are very important because they will blow out carbon dioxide and maintain acid-base balance as well. So the acids and bases in the body are regulated by the lungs, the kidneys. It's an extremely efficient process. Now, healthy kidney will always maintain a pH balance. So if you're generally healthy, you don't have to worry about having a acid in your blood. Let's look at some studies. Uh, so first one talks about you know alkaline water helping you know lose weight. So there was this rat study. In this study, they allowed rats to drink alkaline water for one year. At the completion of the study, rats who drank alkaline water, they had lower body weight, up to 30% less than controls, despite equal food and water intake. So now they're saying that high alkaline water could help weight loss, but at the same time, high alkaline water is also causing growth retardation in these rats. Why, we still don't know. Now this rationale can be used to state that alkaline water is good, it might help you lose weight, just like it did in rats. Uh, so in my opinion, we have better, safer medications and treatments to achieve weight loss rather than drinking alkaline water. The next, uh, generally they'll say that alkaline water helps with uh, esophageal reflux, you know, heartburn. 
So in this study, the patients were given alkaline water with a pH of 8.8, .8, which is on the alkaline side, and which helped reduce acid reflux by denaturing an enzyme called pepsin. So the conclusion of the study was that if you drink alkaline water, because it has good acid buffering capacity, it's going to help your heartburn. The, the issue is that the effect of alkaline water on heartburn are quite short-lived. The other thing is that in this study, the patient also reduced their intake of you know, uh, diets. So maybe that's why they were generating less acid. So the other thing is this is kind of on a lab study, you know, on the acid reflux. It's not really a clinical data, so how much reliable that is and will it translate to clinical is kind of hard to say. Now the acid-base balance and hydration status study, this was after consumption of mineral-based alkaline bottled water. So now unfortunately the funding for this study was actually by Glacial Water Company. Uh, so to me that's a huge red flag. So I wouldn't uh, even consider their findings. It's not a neutral study. So to me, this is a lot about sales and less about science. So our body on its own can keep our pH levels at an optimal level. The kidneys balance it, the blood gets too acidic, body brings it down by breathing out more carbon dioxide, so we hyperventilate. Stomach is a great equalizer. You know, gastric juices, which have digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, they pretty much will neutralize everything we eat and drink. So if you're drinking alkaline water, your stomach is going to acidify it before you can do really anything in the rest of your body. So now is the alkaline water safe? So unless you have kidney disease, alkaline water does not pose any serious health risk. You know, the high pH, the only thing is it can make the skin kind of dry, can make it itchy, and sometimes maybe an upset stomach. The next big question is why is alkaline water so popular? You know, because as a society, we want something that's a quick fix, right? We want a magic pill rather than improving our habits and consuming a healthy diet. So what are some of the risks with alkaline water? You know, as you know, it can cause, you know, growth retardation. So could this be affecting your muscle? Could it be retarding the growth of the muscle tissue? And of course, there was a study in Germany where a town accidentally increased the water pH to 12, which caused a lot of skin burns. Now, the alkaline water is not as alkaline, but Still, it's a reminder that you know high pH isn't necessarily better. Okay, the final wording. So the companies that make alkaline water, they claim several health benefits. None of these claims are substantiated. Most of the small studies that were done were actually funded by the same companies that make alkaline water. Now, the alkaline water is going to lose all its alkalinity in the stomach itself when it's exposed to the stomach acid. So it is not going to change the blood pH. Changing the blood pH is impossible because healthy body is maintaining it in a very, very precise range. Now, the beneficial effect of patients in heartburn, you know, these people also improved their dieting habits and consumed a less processed diet. So the possible effects could be, you know, from drinking Sorry, not from drinking alkaline water, but by switching to a healthier and less processed food. Now, there is also no benefit that alkaline water protects against cancer. Now, it's true that cancer cells cannot live in a highly alkaline environment. However, our normal cells also cannot live in a highly alkaline environment. That's why body maintains it in a such a precise uh, ratio. So when we consume highly processed diet, more acid is going to be produced in the stomach and liver. So if we just limit our consumption, of processed foods, you know, will have better results versus drinking alkaline water. Now, our stomach acid is a natural barrier against infections, as most bacteria will be killed by the stomach acid. Patients that take acid-reducing medications tend to have a higher incidence of bacterial infections. So lowering your stomach acid pH, you know, by drinking alkaline water, in my book, is not a good idea. Now, only drinking RO water or bottled water is also extremely unhealthy and should be avoided. We need minerals. Now, we need micronutrients. So, we need regular consumption of these. So, maybe mixing some tap water in there would actually go a long way. Now, if you have kidney problems, you should absolutely not drink alkaline water because it has very high mineral content and this will lead to a lot of negative health effects. So, again, in my opinion, there is absolutely no benefit or rationale behind consuming tons of alkaline water to improve health. So also excessive use of RO water and bottled water also should be avoided. You know, can cause mineral deficiencies. 
So I hope this was helpful and will help you decide whether alkaline water is right for you or not right for you. Now if you did like the content of this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe. This is uh, Dr. Raj Singh from Las Vegas. I will see you back in a few weeks with uh, another interesting topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.